want to add FPV drone shots to your next project, but you don't own a drone and you don't know anyone that has access to one. Well, that's okay because in this video, we're going to be going over how to use After Effects in combination with Google Earth Studios to create this FPV drone effect and transition. Google Earth Studio is free to anyone, but it is still in beta. So you're going to want to go to google.com slash earth slash studios. I'll have it linked down below. That way you can click it and find it easy and go up here to try earth studio. I did this a while ago, but if I remember correctly, I think they gave me access within like a few days. So once you get accepted, you should get an email to the email you signed up with and have access to this page right here. As you can see here, I just opened a project that I already finished. You can see it's very similar to a lot of editing softwares. It has keyframes and you can see how I keyframe throughout the whole project. And if we scrub through this quickly, you can see how the keyframes affect the clip itself. And one thing you might notice is the textures of the buildings and everything on the map is very, very low quality. That's because when you're working in an open project, it's not rendered out everything yet. So don't worry about that. When you go ahead and render and you click high quality, it's going to make everything look a lot better. So let's go ahead and make a new blank project and name this Chicago River. As you can see here, there's three options, Earth, Moon, or Mars. We're gonna stick with Earth. There's really not too much on the Moon or Mars that we're interested in. You can also change the dimensions of the project you're working on, but you can also change that when you go to export. So I'm gonna stay with 1920 by 1080 for right now. And then you can work in frames or time code. For right now, we're gonna work in frames and I'm gonna change it from 30 FPS to 60 FPS. Most FPV drones are shooting at 60 FPS, so it's gonna make it look a little bit more natural that way. And then once you click start, you can see we have the globe here and we can zoom in on anywhere in the world. If you want help finding something, you can just search up in the top left. We can type in Chicago, Illinois. I want to use pretty much the same spot. So let's go to the Chicago River right here. Now, this is probably the most important part when it comes to doing the FPV drone effects is going to add attributes and making sure field of view is checked as well as roll. Then go ahead and click done. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the field of view from 20 to 90. Typically, FPV drones are like around 90 field of view or like the lenses they use on the camera. So to make it look a little bit more realistic, that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to zoom in a little bit more and then I'm just going to pan it the way I want. And you can see if you click somewhere on the map, you can kind of move around. But if you double click on something, you can kind of like focus that point. And I'm going to play with the pan and the tilt. Go ahead and start like down here because I wanted to kind of dive down and come back up and show the rest of the river. So since our project is 450 frames long at 60 frames per second, it's going to be roughly like seven seconds long. The whole entire clip is going to be. So I'm going to split that up into fifths and go every 90 frames and do a rough keyframe of everything. So let's keyframe everything besides the field of view, then go 90 frames on the timeline and go to our next point. When you're doing this to make it look like a realistic FPV drone, you don't want to go too far away because it's going to be moving way too fast or you don't want to go too close because then it's not going to be moving at all. It comes with a little bit of feel and just playing around with the software. And honestly, a lot of my clips move pretty fast and are most likely faster than like any FPV drone can actually move. As long as you're roughly close to like what it actually can move like, it's going to look good. So for each 90 frames, I just do a really rough job at kind of making it look like where the camera is going to be. We're just going to go through and change the settings. You can see we'll go through and make this look a lot better. Let's go 180 frames forward and then just move a little bit. And the roll is really important to keyframe because like drones kind of move like this throughout. So keep that in mind. And we're going to go back and touch everything up in a little bit as well. Be sure to keyframe the longitude, latitude, and altitude as well. And then go to 270. I kind of want it to like bounce back and forth through the river. I'm going to keyframe the longitude, latitude, and altitude. Go to 360. And then go to the final 450. And let's go zoom up a bit, but not too much. And then tilt everything. It's really important to have the camera facing the way it's actually moving. Otherwise, it's going to be like looking all over the place. So let's go ahead and play this and see what we have just from the start. You can see how it kind of swings back and forth like this. And you can see how it slows down here a little bit. It's because I didn't make the distance the same throughout. So it kind of looks like it slows down. So what we can do to fix that is just move it up a little bit and then just re keyframe over that. And let's see what that looks like. It should be a little faster throughout. And that already looks pretty good, but it's a little too smooth for like an actual FPV drone. You can notice like in, in actual clips, they have like these micro jitters. So we're gonna go through every 30 frames and just change the pan, tilt, and roll. That way it has a little bit more realistic look and it's not super, super smooth. Let's go through 30 frames in and you can see that we're kind of diving down in the building. So it probably shouldn't be aiming up too much yet. Let's go ahead and keep that tilt a little bit more focused down and maybe just change the roll a little bit. So you can see now it's like going a little bit more straight down. And let's go to 60 frames 
drones here, since there's going to be a little bit of momentum, you're already going to be pulling up on the drone. So you kind of just got to think about it like physics wise. It starts to pull up here and by here, you're going to be aiming up a lot more, most likely, and probably have a roll a lot more strong as well. I'm going to make the altitude a little bit lower. And it's all about like micro tweaking and playing throughout. And one thing that will help you with the roll is it's kind of like a balancing act. If you go too much to the right, it's going to eventually have to go to the left to kind of like balance out to stay in line. All this stuff comes with playing with Google Earth Studios for a little bit. It's not the easiest to pick up right off the start. But once you do it a few times and you go through and actually see what's happening, it's not too bad. And what I do is I always highlight all these keyframes down here, right click and go to auto easy ease. I don't do it for the longitude latitude keyframes. It kind of like messes up with like the flow and like momentum and speed of the drone itself. But I think for the pan tilt and roll, it actually looks pretty good most of the time. And then once you easy ease, you can see it makes it a little bit smoother. Nothing too noticeable, but I do like the way it looks. And then once you're satisfied and you have everything that you like, go up here and click render. And what I use is video.mp4. That way it renders with the cloud and it actually doesn't use your computer at all. You can choose where you want this Google Earth Studio tag to be. So I just move it as far to the right and down as possible. Go to texture quality and make sure that's at high. And then go ahead and click submit. It'll say successfully sent Chicago River to cloud. And if you ever wanna see that, you can go up to animation, cloud renders, and you can see it says queued. For the ones that I've been doing that are like 450 frames long, 60 FPS, I like high quality, it's taking like seven to 10 minutes to render out for me. And you'll get an email saying that your render is ready to download. And all you have to do is go up here, animation, cloud renders, and then there's gonna be a download thing like this. You can just click that and it downloads to your computer. And then you're gonna wanna do that same process for another clip. I transitioned from LA to Chicago because I thought it'd be cool to like show two different cities and then open them both up in After Effects. We're gonna be using a similar clip from Chicago that I did earlier, just cause I don't wanna wait that 10 minutes. And the first thing you'll notice is these clips look a lot like Google Earth. You can see this is LA, you moving through the city and then here is Chicago it looks a lot higher quality than what we were working with earlier but it has like that Google Earth look to it to help fix that I'm gonna use Lumetri color and drag that on to the first clip here I'm actually just gonna use one of my LUTs the teal and orange LUT from my essentials bundle to have it look a little bit more realistic looking now it doesn't have as much of that Google Earth look to it. And I'm actually just gonna copy and paste that over to the other one as well. And it's looking a little bit blue. So let's go and change the temperature here on the Chicago one. That looks a lot better. So now our footage is already looking a little bit more realistic. And the next thing I'm gonna add is RSMB. If you don't have RSMB, it's a plugin. I'd highly recommend it. But if you don't have it, you can use CC Force Motion. Uh, that's built into After Effects. It runs a little bit slower, but it does the same thing. And then I'm gonna change that from blur amount from 0.5 to one. Want it to be a little bit more aggressive and then copy and paste that over to our other clip. And you can see if we scrub through here, it's adding motion blur to like the edges that are moving fast. It gives it that look of like motion and actually like it's moving through the city. Now, lastly, to get that transition, we're gonna go ahead and make an adjustment layer. And it was actually just a preset for my motion warp pack. And if I drag on spiral, this, that sauce from there, you're gonna get the exact same look. Click U and I'm gonna line up the keyframes right in the middle. And then to have that in and out zoom effect that I had, I just actually duplicated the adjustment layer and just use like the last like few frames frames of that effect here. And then you can just duplicate it one more time and do the opposite at the end. And then you can see once it's all rendered out, we have the RSMB here on the edges, making it look a lot more smooth, the colors. And then we also got this really dope transition from the motion warp pack. If you guys did want to go ahead and snag it, I'll have it linked down below. It's on my website, brandalmata.com. And if you use code FPV at checkout, you're going to get $5 off. Trying to hook up the YouTube people for watching the video, supporting the channel. I appreciate it. That's all I got for you guys in this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like, subscribe if you're not already. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. Follow me on Instagram. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.